Welcome to Lab 5. In Lab 5 we learn how to pass a variable to a function and we also learn about um, Boolean logic. Um, a little bit about it anyway. So at the end of this lab the computer is going to ask the user to make a move. And If they don't make a, a valid move it will ask them again. <laughs> Now we told we talked a bit before about having skinny code, having code that isn't um, where your um, variable boxes aren't so big. And one of the small boxes are called bools. They can only have two values, yes or no, true or false. So um, we're going to declare a bool value. You know, and this one they show you an example how you declare bool you are smart is equal to true it could be true or false right <laughs> so we're going to um, use bool in here a lot of times what we, we, we run a function for is we want it to give us a, a value and in the case of the bool here we want it to give us a true or a false value but there's many times that we run a function to return a value so it gives the program a value to use somewhere in the program. So it can be any type. We learned floats. Remember those are huge numbers because they have decimals in them. We have the integers. We have strings, which are uh, sentences pretty much. And now we learned the bool. Uh, now we learned uh, the bool value. So we're going to write functions that we can return a value. We've used before the show uh, the uh, main function and the show board function. They don't return any value so that we have the word void in there. That's why we have the word void in there because they don't return anything. And you have to tell what kind of variable type that that um, function is going to return. So now under my void show board function, I'm going to make another function. I'm going to do bool move is valid function. I got my curly braces in here. I'm going to move that whole bit business over. So inside these curly braces, I'm going to put an if function. So I put if. So I'm going to put inside these curly brackets, I'm going to put if board move is not equal to x. Just like that, if board move is not equal to x. So now I'm going to check to see if it's going to, not going to be equal to y. So that requires an else statement, right? So next I'm going to add my else statement. with my curly brackets. So now we're going to introduce a, uh, a command called return. The only thing the return command does is it tells the computer what value that function is giving back. Okay? It also ends the function. Once the computer runs the return command, it stops running code in that function. So if this satisfies the condition, the return is going to end the command, just like break did. Okay? It's, it's like break. It's very similar to it. So that's what these codes do. You're going to use a return command in every function that returns a value. Don't forget that. So what do we put in here? So if the if it's not equal to x, I'm going to put in here return true. If 
else return false. Now we're going to look at the conditional operator, the double AND. All this means here is that both these conditions have to be true. If we have two apples and we have two oranges, we will share fruit. Okay? Both these conditions have to be met. So that's what this double AND means. That means both conditions. You look at this side and you look at this side of, oops, look at this side and you look at that side, they both must be true. So how are we going to use that here? We want to see if an X has been entered into the, the um, variable and we want to check to see if an O has been entered into the variable. That's what this double AND is going to do. So where we're going to add it is right here. We've already checked to see if the board move um, was equal to x. So now we add our double AND. And we'll put our uh, board move is not equal to O. session we talked about global and local variables. Remember glo we, um, we declare global variables that can be used throughout the whole program and local variables that can only be used between the curly brackets. Okay, we have uh, move is valid function and it has two variables in there. We have the board function, the board variable, and we got the move variable. Okay, board variable is a global variable, so it can be used in many function. Any function can use it, but move is a local variable because it's inside of the main function. So once we leave the main function, it's not operative. Local variables cannot be used outside of the function they're in. So our move is valid function cannot use the move function. See, it cannot use this because it's declared inside the main function. So to fix that, um, there's two ways we could do it. We could make move into a global variable, or we could pass move's value to the move is valid function. So we don't have to make it a global va uh, variable. To, to use it inside the move is valid function. We just have to pass it on. So this is really pretty slick. We can pass a variable's value to a function without using the variable itself. So you can have a local variable, but you can pass its value to another function. So you see programmers can use the same function on more than one variable. In this case, you can paint the car or you can paint the house or you can paint the fence. See? So this is what it looks like. Right here is where the past variable goes. And this is the, the other function. All you have to do is you just edit the function declaration and you include the past variable. So now the computer knows to pass this on into this function. So he passes this into that. So now we're going to add a passed variable to a function next. So now let me show you how to pass that variable, that move variable that's local into um, the global case. So we come up here and we've um, declared our global variables and um, now we declared our functions. You know I forgot to declare that function. I better do that. Put in bool move is valid. Now for me to be able to use uh, the move 
uh, I need to do, put in here. Now I'm going to change the variable move to m so that the function will be, use the past variable instead of trying to use the local variable. In the code for the move is, ver, uh, is valid here that we just added. Um, I'm going to use the past variable instead of trying to use the local variable. So I'm going to put in here int m. So I added a variable to the move is valid function declaration. The past variable is called m. So now I'm going to edit the move is valid function and I'm going to change the variable move to m so that the function is going to use the past variable instead of trying to use the local variable. So I come down near the end of my program and find the line bool movement is valid. So now I'm going to put in here int m as well. So now I'm going to fix where it says move here. I'm going to make that just a little m. A little m here as well. Okay, a do while loop. This is a new um, conditional loop we, we um, introduced in this uh, chapter. Um, it's pretty similar to the while loop. The only difference is with a do while loop, this has got to run at least once. So, you know, if I'm doing um, if I'm doing my mending while the uh, dishes are wa are running in the dishwasher, uh, as long as it, um, they're running in the dishwasher, I'm going to be doing my mending. That's a bad example, but you get the idea. But you see the do command comes before the while command. The do while loop will tell your program to ask the user where they want to move once. If the user doesn't pick a valid move, it'll keep them asking until they do. First you find this, the line sin player 2 name. Add two lines after that line then type the comment, do this until the player chooses a valid move. Under that line, type do, then press enter, and then type your curly bracket. Find the sin line move, or C in line. Under that, type while move is valid, move is not true. Now watch the spacing on this. Then we move it over. We just click the move it over button. Okay, the end of this do while uh, function, a do while loop, um, calls the move is valid function and passes it into the um, variable moves value. See, the real power of passing a variable is you're passing the, the value of the variable not the variable itself. So when we have the do while loop, it calls the move is valid function and passes the variable move. So the value gets stored in M. Okay? The move is valid function uses M to figure out if the move is valid. It's either true or false, right? And you'll check to make sure your function is working correctly. So what are you looking for? It's asking you to put to type in space one through I mean zero through eight, zero through nine, right? Suppose you put you typed in Q. It wouldn't work, would it? So once again, we're going to um, debug our fit our work here and see if it works. See if there's any build errors. So I click uh, debug. Start debugging. Yes. OK, 
Okay, well, well, we'll run that. Debug. I'm sorry. Start without debugging. Let's put... So you just put in the number there and you're all set. Now what if it didn't work? What would you do? All you have to do is you check your code against their code. Make sure you've got everything in the right place. We did a lot of complicated stuff in lab 5. Just double check your code with their code, okay?